We have planted the peanuts in the spring. We just had a beautiful buck. He was laying down here and uh, couldn't get a photograph or any video. By the time he heard my four-wheeler, I just caught a glimpse of him as he stood up and ran down towards the creek. But it, he looked very similar, same color markings and same kind of uh, antlers as the picture we got last year. So this may be his territory and he may be back. We're beginning to see more and more signs of rooting here in where we had these peanuts planted. That means that there are hogs coming up from the swamp. And we had some deer because we saw a big buck. So it looks like maybe there'll be some activity here for the guys. It's fall. We're in the middle of September. We still got a couple months still gun season. That'd be a little creek right here just buzzing with life, be it uh, plant life, insects, fish, tons of little babies. a great place for animals like raccoons and things to come here and snack and this place is just loaded with raccoon tracks well it was a raccoon tracks which it's blooming now and uh, it forms pea pods and the pods fall off around December and they're one of the favorite food for koya. I was introduced to partridge peas in the Geneva State Forest where they actually cultivate and plant. Uh, they've got two large fields of partridge peas just so that they can help uh, propagate the species of quail in the Geneva State Forest. But in my travels I had never seen partridge peas in the wild other than in Geneva and that was actually cultivated and planted. So we've been searching and searching and searching and just last week I came down here on the uh, Bee Sox property and I thought I found it. They were much smaller uh, the Geneva planted peas are probably this high. The ones that I found here are only very, very small. They're thin. They're, they're very, they're, they're wild. So I went ahead and took some photographs and sent it off to my experts with the uh, Longleaf Alliance. And they confirmed that they were small partridge peas. And uh, we came back today to check them out and they have actually started to develop the pea pods and we're going to show you that right now. One thing whenever you're out checking uh, plants and things out in the wild, it's always a good idea to wear gloves or some kind of protective clothing. I like to usually wear a long sleeve shirt. Today I don't have a long sleeve shirt and uh, I really wish I did. And the reason being is if you look, And there, that to me looks like poison ivy. And it's one thing you really don't want to get messed up in. It can really, really make you sick. Uh, blisters, and especially if you're allergic to it. And these are the little partridge peas that I've been talking to you about. Look 
well to turn into a pea fall. Yeah, and this plant, it's already started. One, two, three, there's four, five, six, there's a number of them. The pea pods that are already started. And uh, that's going to be good for the quail. And be good for us. We're going to harvest the peas. And uh, we plant them in a bunch of different places so that we can uh, help our quail population here in the Bissau property. Look at the bloom, isn't it? It's just gorgeous. Just a miracle. What a fabulous place for wildlife like uh, deer. That's about five or six oak trees. One of their favorite uh, snacks. Uh, acorns. I mean that branch right there is like loaded. Isn't that just beautiful back here? And some hardwoods. These are all hardwoods. One and a few pines mixed in right here. And there's a gully over there. Wash. It goes all the way up. Field. And some more hardwoods right across the gully. So much of this land isn't being used. We'll cut here and a cut there, and you'd have prime location for excellent riding. These little tiny flowers. Ain't that fantastic? But if I just take a, take a little bit of a nap. are cotton plants. I'm sure if you've uh, watched any of my videos I've talked about cotton a lot. It's one of the uh, main crops here in Alabama and in the south. It always has been I think. Uh, it used to be the main crop until uh, 1919 
when uh, they had a mole weevil epidemic and it just completely wiped out the cotton crop and uh, they ended up having to switch to other forms of farming. They switched to corn and soybean, peanuts, in order to survive. In fact, in downtown Enterprise, they have a monument. And I'll uh, show you a picture of that to the bow weevil for that uh, natural cotton that's out as a bloom. A beautiful little bloom that, uh, of course, you know, the butterflies and bees and things come and they pollinate and so forth. And after the bloom, after the flower disappears, it starts to form these balls. Now this, as you see right here, is a, a cotton ball in formation. And of course, the cotton is what's used to hold the seeds. So that the plant can uh, rejuvenate. But this ball, when it uh, is developed, will have that white fiber substance, and the seeds will be wrapped in that white fiber substance. The rose, the planted rose that the farmer plants. And there's a reason for that. I mean, the machines now can uh, actually the all their equipment is designed and spaced in between the rows. The tires fit down in between rows. The, uh, all the picking machinery will fit down the rows. And that's the reason for the rows. Traps are checked every once in a while to see make sure that their crop doesn't have bull weevils in it. If it did, of course, they could spray for it or whatever. If, but if it, if they didn't have these traps out, there would be no way for the farmer to know that his crop is infested and the walls would be destroyed. Years ago, I you would find them plastered all over the fields. But now it's like they only need one. But that's what that is. You can find at least one by every field. And if you have to pick all the cotton that's on these plants by hand. This is a very, very large field. This farmer's crop is uh, walled out. Under all those leaves are beautiful balls of cotton. Usually the next step would be to spray the field so that the leaves die and fall off and then bring the harvester in and cut.